Hello everyone. I want to welcome everyone once again to the fourth international conference on applied informatics. My name is Akane Noa Oluwatobi. I'm here to present a paper titled A Supervised Approach to Credit Card Fraud Detection Using Artificial Neural Network. In this work, we simply want to illustrate how ANN, which is a supervised machine learning technique can be used for credit card fraud detection here here are my presentation outline i will start with the introduction now what are the pros and cons of credit card transactions the continuous reliance and usage of credit cards and mobile banking applications without strict oversight and verification have opened up many customers to diverse kinds of financial frauds and attacks. The increased credit card transactions, especially during the COVID-19 lockdown, gave fraudsters the more opportunities to perpetrate their illicit acts. According to a US-based Fidelity National Information Services, the dollar volume of attempted illegal transactions in dollar increased by 35% in April 2020 alone. That was during the COVID-19 lockdown period. With the United States as the largest country of credit card fraud cases, credit card fraud cost the world $24.2 billion in 2018 with credit card fraud transactions estimated to hit 40 billion dollars by 2027. This is the reason why measures must be put in place to detect and prevent credit card fraudulent activities. Also, according to the UNICEF Protection Index, credit and debit card frauds are Americans' top concern. It's even the concern even surpasses the concern they have for terrorist activities. So in as much as credit card transactions has some uh, advantages, it also has some disadvantages. Now, what is credit card fraud? Credit card fraud occurs when an individual uses a credit card for personal purposes without the owner's permission, without the owner's consent, and with no intention of repaying back the owner. Furthermore, the person who uses the card has no ties to the card holder or user and has no intention of approaching the card's owner or repaying the card owner for the transactions made with his or her card. So, credit card fraud can occur when an unauthorized card holder uses a fake identity to gain the confidence of a bank official or when stolen credit cards are used for transactions without the approval of the card owner. Now there are different types of credit card frauds. Number one, we have application fraud. Application fraud occurs when a fraudster gains control of an application, obtains the customer's information, and creates a phony account and then conducts transactions with those uh, with those information retrieved. Another type of credit card fraud is called electronic or manual card imprint. In electronic imprint fraud attempts, the, fraud, the fraudster retrieves the needed information from the card's magnetic strip. This information is then utilized to carry out fraudulent activities. Another type of credit card fraud is card non present fraud attempt. In card not present fraud attempts, the hacker does not make use of the actual physical card at the time of the transaction. Counterfeit card, counterfeit card fraud attempts, the hacker replicates data available on the magnetic strip of the original card to create a fake card that will be used in the transaction. Another type of credit card uh, fraud is lost or stolen fraudulent card attack. In this type of attack, 
the actual owner of the card lost the card and is found by another froster or when the froster deliberately steals the card from the owner now when an atm card is lost since most pin are always four digit numbers it is always easy to predict the four uh, the four the correct pin numbers different programs can be can be written to confirm to detect the correct um atm uh, pin another type of credit card fraud is also is called card id theft instances in card ID theft instances, the card holder's ID or credentials is stolen and the stolen credentials are used in perpetrating crime. So these are some of the uh, credit card fraud attempts. Now in this work, we want to describe how artificial neural network, which is a supervised machine learning technique, can be used in credit card fraud detection now as is a practical approach to how you can use artificial neural network to detect fred, uh, credit card fraud detection so i will invite my other colleague Benny Oluwadara, to demonstrate how we've been able to use artificial neural network to detect credit card fraud thank you you going to turn on the credit fraud detection using ANA. First thing I did was to import the libraries I needed, NumPy, Matplotlib, Seaborn, and Pandas. Next thing I did was to import the data sets using the Pandas library and to get the first five elements in the data. Next thing I did was to get an information about the data, just to get the column and their data types. The next thing I did was to get the description of the data, to get the count, the mean, the standard deviation, the minimum 25% quota, 50% quota, and 75% quota, and the max quota, the max of all the columns in the data set. The next thing was to get the total number of null value in the data set, which was none. And the next one was also to check the columns in the data set. Then the next was to get the total count of the non fraudulent transaction and the fraudulent transaction. Zero stands for non fraudulent and one stands for fraudulent. The next one was to get the shape of the fraudulent and the non fraudulent transaction. After that, I drew a disk plot of the time distribution and the amount and distribution of the amount. Next thing I did was to draw an histogram of the fraudulent transaction and the non-fraudulent transaction. After that I drew an histogram of all the columns and how the data in them are distributed. The next thing was to draw an heat map to get the correlation of the data set of the columns in the data set. After that I imported a skitlab the skitlab library to get my standard scalar which I use for feature scaling and also the test the train test split to split the data set. The first thing I did was to scale the data set using the standard scalar which is a form of feature scaling and the next thing I did was to split the data set. So I split the data set into three the train data set, the validation data set and the test data set. The next thing was to build was to build the model, the ANN, ANN model. The model had four layers. The first layer had 20, had 256 nodes, and the and he uses he uses the ReLU activation. While the other two layers after that also had 56 nodes and used the ReLU activation. The last layer had one node and uses the Sigma activation. Then the next thing was to after you build the model, the next thing was to train the model. Then to train the model, we imported the train data set and the validation data set. The train data set was to train the model, while the validation was to get the performance of the model while training the model. So next, this was where we trained the model. We The model was trained using 300 epochs. So these are the total number of epochs that were used from 1 to 300. After that, the next thing was to get the test, was to use the test data set to get the performance of the model. After we got the performance of the model, the next thing was to check the performance of the model while training and to get the performance of the model while we were testing the model using the test data set. So this is the final thing. This is when we were training the model using the validation data set. This was the performance we got. And when we use the test data set to get it after training it, this was the performance we got, and that's all.